Well, if this doesn't sum up the day right here, both <laughs> players starting off with Jirachi. No, I, I think this is just a quad Jirachi mural. It's what it's starting to feel like at the moment. But, uh, um, slap fight. It's going to slap the most. <laughs> they, do run, they do run metal energy. Oh, so yeah, they can. You never know what can happen. <laughs> um, but as we've been talking about with Malamar for quite a while, that's sort of a script that you stick to, and that is uh, put down lots of Inke to start with, uh, and then, you know, possibly attack with Giratina if you can. Uh, it seems to be the advice that I received from Brent yesterday about this, this mirror match and how it was a very intense skill mirror match. So we'll have to see who uh, can draw better, but also who has the better skill. Indeed. Yeah, looking at the deck list, they're fairly similar. Uh, I do see one difference that really stands out to me, and that is one Reggie Steel in Joey's deck uh, from that Celestial Storm expansion. It's got... Uh, it's got, I believe, the exoskeleton ability, and it's got a resistance to psychic types, so it's actually pretty resilient against opposing Giratina. So that could be kind of a mirror breaker where, you know, you're typically trading Giratina back and forth, but Registeel can kind of throw a wrench in things and be very difficult to knock out. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting because I think Registeel, it's, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's 60 <laughs> damage plus 60 more if the opponent has an ability. Yeah. Um, so that's not quite a knockout on a Giratina, but it is a knockout on Giratina if you combine it with something like Distortion Door, uh, which is your own Giratina's ability. Um, so that could set up some interesting plays where multiple Pokemon are knocked out in one turn uh, that can kind of swing the matchup that way. Instead of just having to go into Giratina, facing off against Giratina, <laughs> as most people expect. But we see Joey here, he's put down a Ditto. Um, he's put down an Inke, and he's just using that Stellar Wish ability to select a trainer card from the top five. Looks like there's a few he can choose from as well. Yeah, he's got Ultra Ball he can pick from, all sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, and Registeel can simply, I mean, Guzma out a Malamar and knock it out. It's got plenty of options. It's a strange tech card I would never have expected to see in this kind of a deck, but hey, sometimes if you can figure out the metagame, you can find some weird cards that are typically not very good but have very specific and narrow uses that can really swing a matchup. Uh, it reminds me of that when that Chimeco came out of nowhere with the Bell of Silence and really ruined a lot of the mirror matches and uh, set up your, your match against the Zorark Lycanroc deck. Uh, just weird cards sometimes that look completely unplayable come out of nowhere in specific metagames and you're just like... Oh, yeah, I win this matchup now because of this weird common that nobody has, has ever played. <laughs> Chimeco is, something, is a card that I actually love so much. I think it's <laughs> such a great card, but something we haven't seen at all this weekend. Yeah. And I think it sort of fulfills the slot that Jirachi fills. So if you have a Jira if you have Jirachi, you can't really afford to have a bench space with Chimeco on it. Mm. Um, so th I think that's one reason among many that people haven't played Chimeco this weekend, to be honest. Yeah, it's also not very good against Zapdos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's definitely one of the other reasons. Uh, so it looks like Joey got a decent start. He got an NK down and the Ditto Prism Star, which can represent a second Malamar. So about as good of a start as you can hope for. You know, he did not get any energy in his discard pile or an energy attachment on a Giratina or anything like that. But still in a decent spot. But Brent starting off extremely well. Going to go ahead, Mysterious Treasure, discarding a Psychic Energy and actually go right for the Ultra Necrozma GX. Yeah, very interesting play. You'd think in this matchup you'd want to be avoiding putting down GX Pokemon just so your opponent can't take two prizes when you can only take one. Um, but clearly Brent has a plan. He has a strategy going that we are not yet privy to, <laughs> but will be. Um, and I'm sure he has further follow-up to find Inkays and um, other Pokemon in that sense. I'm going to guess it involves Photon Geyser. That's, that's his plan. It's a pretty good attack. Yeah. <laughs> but has to Viridian Forest away a Metal Energy, which is... Really difficult when the deck runs so few of them. Yeah, he actually just discards it with Viridian Forest so he can Lily for additional cards, doesn't even search for another energy card, and looks like he's gotten at least one Ultra Ball, so he'll be able to get one Inke down, but would have loved to get two, maybe three down. Yeah, definitely not the best start. It's not typically what Malamar's looking for. Um, they typically don't play the Professor Elms. They do want to try to draw into it with a plethora of ne Nest Balls and Ultra Balls. Uh, Lily as well, just to draw cards. But, um, yeah, sadly, only finds one. Yeah, although, fortunately, he did go for the Ultra Necrozma straight away, so even if he gets zero Malamar on the next turn, he can simply attach to Ultra Necrozma and then play something like a Skateboard or Guzma and uh, attack with that Photon Geyser. And thanks to the Beast Energy, 
It can also attack for 130 damage, so knocks out basically anything in a Malamar deck outside of the GXs. Yeah, does it knock out the... Uh Reggie Just the Reggie Steel. Yeah. Oh, the Reggie Steel lives. <laughs> yes, Reggie Steel. Everything in a typical Malamar. He knew deck. it. <laughs> Joey knew it. All right. So, Jirachi wakes up. That's very important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the the original Jirachi from the EX Deoxys set that was actually very important. Um, I think Joey asking if he can play down Viridian Forest. The answer is no. You cannot play a stadium card of the same name. <laughs> We're already playing in Viridian Forest. Yeah. Oh, he's discarding the forest. Okay. Okay. That is a legal play, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the original one, you couldn't use the, the pokey power if Drachi was asleep. Ah. So waking up was actually a very, very big deal. But this is a strict upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> Although the original could look at the top five and pick any card, not just the oh. trainer card. So Strict downgrade. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Oh, so here uh, we go. I still think this card's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of the field here agrees with you. Yeah. Uh, Ultra blowing oh, away no. that Registeel. Sorry, What's the Registeel will not feature unless we see a rescue stretcher uh, coming out to put that Pokemon <laughs> into play. <laughs> Brent's going to give it a read. Yep. Not a conventional uh, sort of card you'll see, but you know, Joey's actually known for these sort of unconventional decks and unconventional deck lists, and they've worked really well for him in the, from, for him in the past. Um, so, you know, why change that strategy now? Sure. Uh, it's a bit messy here, but we do see the <laughs> Ultra Ball for Giratina and then another Ultra Ball discarding the Giratina plus another card. We do see Malamar come out. And we saw Joey go to discard his Dawnwings Necrozma GX, but actually pulled back. Um, it's a little awkward because, I mean, you showed your opponent you had it, mm. <laughs> and then you took it back. You're like, oh, maybe I don't want to Ultra Ball that. So it'll always be in the back of Brent's mind that, oh, he does play that card, and it's not prized. Yeah, it is a really Im quite important card in this matchup as well because it can kind of swing the you know the tempo back into your favor. Now you might think 180 damage doesn't actually knock out an Ultra Necrozma, but when you have access to that Distortion Door mm -hmm. ability and you can put one damage counter on ne Ultra Necrozma and set it up for that knockout with 180 with the GX move, um, yeah. and also make yourself immune to sort of damage and effects the next turn, that's it's pretty strong. Yeah, you can also uh, use Beast Energy to get the extra 30 damage. Weird to think about, but Donwing's Necrozma GX is an Ultra Beast. It is an Ultra Beast. And here we see a mysterious treasure. Probably wants to find a couple more Inkei. Um, probably start attacking this turn and try to be the first person to take the, the first prize. He does get the second Malamar into play, so double Psychic Recharge is an option. Uh, we do see Giratina coming out with the Distortion Door. I'm not sure if there's actually enough Psychic Energy in his discard pile to pull off an attack this turn, though. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Ultra Balls, but not a lot of energy being sort of thrown away. Remembering with that Viridian Forest, you can always find energy uh, yeah. whenever you need to, but you have to have those in the discard pile if you want a Psychic Recharge. Looks like another Inke comes down, and it would be nice for Joey to get an attack off here. He could take the first knockout, um, take the lead in this game, but it looks like that's not going to be the case here. He's already used Stellar Wish with Jirachi, so... That won't be an option anymore. Looks like just the one psychic energy, and that's going to be the end of his turn. Always got to follow the rules. Flip to see if you're awake. <laughs> and so here we see it's Stellar Wish from Bren. And really, it's just a case of just Stellar Wishing until you're ready to attack, I think. That's really what it's come down to in this case. Uh, yeah. Brent having a look there. It's funny because th that sleep flip is extra irrelevant because like 99% of the time you just retreat with a skateboard anyway. It doesn't matter if it's asleep. <laughs> but Kyle, that 1% of the time yeah. that you need to retreat with the energy, it's super relevant. Uh, we see that Brent also plays Switch as well, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. I just think you could slap. I mean, can't do that when you're asleep. Ah, uh, you're right. <laughs> Next level plays. Should be, should be thinking ahead. <laughs> so Brent here, probably going to try to get some Malamars into play. Maybe look for his own Giratina, or is he committed to using this Ultra Necrozma GX? Looks like he is just going to go with Ultra Necrozma, saying, you know what, I don't care if um, if it gives up two prize cards. Uh, I mean, if, if the opponent is committed to just using Giratina, it is still a two-for-two two trade. Uh, you'll knock out two Giratina for your one Ultra Necrozma GX, so two prize cards apiece. So it's not the worst trade-off, and it does use... Uh, very few resources early on in the game. You only have to discard one Psychic Energy, so it's easy to set up. It's not a bad route to go down. And you have to sort of think about uh, Giratina's attack as well, that uh, Shadow Impact. It puts four damage counters on their side of the field. 
Um, and that can kind of set up plays for yourself, actually, with the Sky Scorching Light later in the game. They're sort of putting damage counters down for you. So if they're putting enough down in the, in the right places, um, you can take multiple prizes in one turn. Um, so Giratina is not, sometimes not the most optimal attacker, um, but certainly it does seem like it in this case, just because you don't want to be giving up those two prizes. So Joey here has some decisions to make. Uh, looks like he's actually going to... Well, he was going to discard his Lily with Viridian Forest, but decides to discard his Viridian Forest to Viridian Forest instead. I think we've seen that play before. <laughs> yeah. uh, both players, that's the only stadium card they're playing, so uh, it's pretty much a worthless card once one of them is out there. You might as well discard them when you can. Yeah. Nobody plays Field Blower either, so once we're in Viridian Forest, we stay there. It's kind of confusing because it's a field of squids, but <laughs> sort of... Everything makes sense in Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, we do have three Malamar in play now for Joey. He does have a switch in his hand, and he, of course, drew another Viridian Forest. <laughs> so what this means, having three Malamar in play, means that he can reliably just charge up a Giratina every single turn, as long as he can retreat the Pokemon that he sends into the active position. So all he needs is an escape board on that oh. Inkay, and we can just continuously cycle Giratinas. But I think I didn't see any energy in his discard pile. You are correct. He's got all the Malamar, but none of the energy in the discard pile. So he's already used Viridian Forest, so he cannot do it again and discard a Psychic Energy from his hand. So he just has to pass, and that's a big, big missed opportunity. Uh, yeah, letting your opponent get up two prize cards before you even attack, that's a rough spot to be in. Yeah, very awkward start, especially in this kind of matchup where we're expecting sort of one for one for one for one until someone can pull ahead. And this just might be Brent pulling ahead right here um, if Joey can't recover. Now, we do know he always has that Dawnwings Necrozma GX as an option, which can actually use Invasion, put itself into the active spot, make itself immune, and you have to be behind on prizes to be able to use that GX attack. Yeah. Um, so that's always an option uh, that Brent has to be aware of, and Joey, you know, also has to be aware of yeah. and use at the right time. But if he doesn't have energy for it, it makes it a little bit awkward. Oops, looks like Brent is going to discard his own Viridian Forest to get his Psychic Energy, so... That seems to be the only target so far <laughs> for, for discarding a card with Viridian Forest. But uh, just a single energy, Photon, Geyser, Knockout on a Malamar. And now Brent is down to four prize cards. And without any Psychic Energy in his discard pile, Joey is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and this sort of Malamar versus Malamar matchups, especially when it was the older variant with the Necrozma GX, uh, it really was just a prize race and who had the tempo is really what it came down to. And it kind of feels like Brent, even though it's only two prize cards, it's pulled quite far ahead in this matchup. Um, usually, you know, when it's one prize either side, you're feeling okay, you can always come back from that. But when it's two, it's quite awkward. Um, really, sort of, Joey's going to have to work hard to really bring himself back into this match, I'd say. Sure seems like it. At some point, he's probably going to have to go with that Dawn Wings Necrozma GX and try to make a comeback, but it's not looking good. Um, even if he can pull off an attack with Giratina here, it's a two-hit knockout on this Ultra Necrozma GX, so it's just not a good spot to be in, and he lost one of his three Malamar. It does uh, have a Guzma, so he will be able to select a target on Brent's bench. Um, you'd have to think. It's got to be Malamar. <laughs> yeah, with the energy. Uh, there's some consideration for going for the one without the energy, because that's one less energy in your opponent's discard pile, one less to psychic recharge with. But uh, if we're at a point where Brent already has a bunch of energy in there, I guess you can take away the one that could potentially retreat later. And I've I've even seen Psychic Spear used a couple times. To effect? Yeah, you knock out other Malamar. Oh, excellent. <laughs> that's, that's the next level. Get rid of Giratina, just yeah. go with Malamars. <laughs> So Stella Wish here is going to find Brent a Mysterious Treasure, and he's going to get rid of a Malamar, so that's Ooh. very interesting. Uh, hopefully I mean, he'll have Rescue Stretches to be able to get those back later in the game, because he is going to find an Inkay. I mean, when you only have to discard one energy to Photon Geyser every turn, I guess you don't need many Malamar. Yeah, I suspect Brent will, at some point, maybe have to knock out a GX, whether it's at Dawnwing's Necrozma GX or not. So it's still beneficial for him to have Pokemon uh, on the bench that can load up that Ultra Necrozma GX when it has to be loaded up. See Brent doubling down on the Ultra Necrozma GX here. Benching a second one, attaching a Metal Energy, and you know, this is kind of smart because it does get around the Dawnwings Necrozma GX knockout. Uh, the other one with the Beast Energy has the 10 damage already, so 
it's in range for that Moon's Eclipse GX, but now this fresh one will not be knocked out, if, even if Joey is able to power up that Dawnwing's Necrozma. I want to see if Joey decides to continue with the uh, Giratina route here, if he's able to sort of chain those and continuously knock out those Malamars and prevent Brent from ever uh, getting energy onto his Necrozma. Uh, because Malamar is the only way for the uh, the, the okay. sort of Malamar, Psychic Recharge, sorry, but yeah. I guess it's irrelevant now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joey looks at it and says, oh, next game. <laughs> and so that's the power of Brent going just two prizes ahead. I know it sounds silly and it doesn't seem like that many, but just pulling ahead by two is sort of enough in this kind of matchup just to feel like, oh, I can't really come back from this. Yeah, and that's great presence of mind from Joey. I mean, when you're playing a game, you always have the mindset of, I'm going to fight till the very end. I'm going to try to come back. I'm going to try to win. But when you're in a tournament setting, and especially in this specific situation where it's win or you're done, ties don't help you at all. A uh, tie is effectively the same as a loss. you got to give yourself as much time as possible to actually win the match. And if you play another 5, 10 minutes, you might rob yourself of, a, of an opportunity to win the match. Yeah, knowing when to sort of move on is definitely an, an art form and something yeah. that the uh, <laughs> you know, more skilled players, typically you see them be a bit more aware of when to do that and when maybe to continue fighting. Um, Brent here... Sorry, Joey will be able to select whether he goes first or second. Um, and you'd have to say in a matchup where you need to get Malamars out, you're probably going to opt to go first. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're somewhat new to the Pokemon TCG, or even if you're experienced and you ever think, maybe I should go second, you should probably ignore that thought because <laughs> going first currently is the way to go. I think there was a time when going second was okay <laughs> a couple of years ago. Yeah, was it? maybe. There was an argument for it when <laughs> Night March was a deck. Yeah. But uh, it's certainly Even not then, I, I've seen that backfire many times. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'll go second, I'll get the first attack, and then you play your first turn, you're like, uh, I pass. <laughs> I wish I'd had time to set up. <laughs> yeah. Or your opponent look, go first and like play a Hex Maniac, and then you, you look at your hand and be like, oh, well, I'm not attacking. So <laughs> guess but I should have gone first. Certainly in this format as well, with Marshadow from Shining Legends yeah. uh, running around, you definitely want to get as many things down as you can before your opponent potentially plays that. Yep. Uh, to disrupt you, but two uh, mulligans from Brent there is going to give Joey a few more resources to work with in his opening hand, maybe help him find a few more of the uh, Inkays that he's looking for, um, Dittos perhaps as well. well. Fun fact, neither player plays Let Loose Marshadow. Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> they know their hand is safe. Yeah. All right, so both players setting up for game number two. Brent finally found a basic Pokemon, so we can begin the game. Do you see that beast energy in his prize cards, which could be relevant, but otherwise nothing too big? Yeah, and especially that Inke as well. I know it doesn't seem big, but having one Inke uh, prize when your opponent is wanting to target them down is pretty pretty relevant. It could be impactful. Certainly uh, could be, yeah. Joey's able to, you know, knock out three consecutively and Brent <laughs> can't find that fourth one. Yeah, all right, but we have game number two beginning here from the final round here of day one of the Oceania International Championships between Brent and Joey. One of these players could move on with a victory, lock themselves in for day number two at this international championships, the, the second one of the season, and it's a big one. There's a lot of prizes on the line, lots of prize money. You know, you get the title of international champion, and you get a bunch of championship points, which can get you an invitation to the world championships, as well as uh, improve your standings to you know, be in the top 16 of your region or top whatever it is of your region. It changes from <laughs> yeah, region yeah, to region, yeah. but yeah. I mean, I would even say that uh, a to Oh, yes. They're well, Doesn't their play hands Marshadow. are not safe. <laughs> They've got a judge instead. We um, do have the original, the judge, coming in. It's actually a really great start from Joey. So he was able to get an energy in the discard pile, an NK down. Uh, hopefully he'll get an attachment to that Ultra Necrozma GX. And I mean, he also has uh, the ability to Stellar Wish as well. Uh, which will find him another piece, which could just be like a nest ball or an ultra ball to find another NK. Um, so it's a great start. And, you know, he's also hoping that he's completely disrupted ben Brent's hand. Um, but I immediately see an ultra ball and a Viridian forest in there. So that's something going on. Yeah, it doesn't completely disrupt Brent. Like, he'll get to do things, but it certainly hurts. Like, even when you recover from a judge or a let loose, um, Having to do things like Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele GX to get a Lily really affects how the rest of the game plays out. So even though you don't lose the game immediately, 
long term, having that Tapu Lele GX on your bench can really affect how things go. And we do see the Drachi does wake up. We're going to be over to Brent's turn. He does seem to have a pretty decent hand for recovering. I mean, he is going to have to Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele, get the Lily and go from there, but I've seen much worse. Yeah, I mean, this is a very different uh, start. This is a very different way than the uh, first game went. Yeah. Just because both players are playing multiple GXs. And those tabu tabuleles are certainly not safe when you have Ultra Necrozma <laughs> GX hanging around, able to do so much damage. I mean, it's been put it, these decks have really flourished because uh, there are those tag team Pokemon that have 240 HP. Um, tabulele is nothing. It has 170 <laughs> HP. Necrozma, Ultra Necrozma GX can deal with that. Just has to discard two Psychic Energy and then yeah, boom, easy. 180 doesn't damage. Need, doesn't need six. Yeah, it's funny how much of a liability Tapu Lele GX has become. Uh, it used to be, you know, you have the 90 HP Jirachi EX for so long. That was uh, an extreme liability. Two prize card knockout, but you'd play it anyway because, I mean, it's great. It turns your Ultra Ball into a supporter card. And uh, the damage output has increased so much on all these decks that now the 170 HP Tapu Lele is also not safe. So Brent's got pretty good there. He's um, played the... Ultra Ball to get a Tapu Lele and able to get a Lily off that. And that's just an ideal turn one supporter. It gets you eight cards in your hand and hopefully you're going to be able to find pieces that you need, such as those Inkays, or in this case, the Jirachi as well. Yeah, it's nice to be able to grab Jirachi. Uh, it's a Pokemon you don't mind if it gets knocked out and it can dig you into uh, another Nest Ball, Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, something like that to get you another Inkay. And I'd say that's certainly what Brent needs to find. If not an Ultra Necrozma with an energy attachment, he needs to find another Inkay to be able to you know, start, his, uh, start his attacking going next turn. Yeah, and he does find the Nest Ball, so can get a second Inkay onto the bench. It's a bit awkward. He had to use his energy attachment to retreat into Drachi, so he's going to end his turn with zero energy cards in play. And it's going to make it difficult for him to pull off an attack next turn, but it's still possible. I mean, with Malamar, if you need energy, <laughs> anything's possible. If he's able to get two Malamars down and use the, both psychic recharge abilities onto an Ultra Necrozma GX and a Metal Energy onto their, you know, that's, what, 180 damage? Oh, yeah, that's all. Um, that's all you need. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no 200, but it's still pretty good. Uh, Joey, on his side, he will only get up one Malamar this turn, but I think that's also enough. I mean, if he can just find a Metal Energy to attach to that Ultra Necrozma, he can knock out the Jirachi if he so chooses. Um, you kind of wonder, though, if he'd want to leave the Ultra Necrozma in the active spot, though. So it's a bit of a... It's an awkward dance, this matchup, I think, because it really yeah. comes down to who can take two prizes when and who's going to take one prize when. Um, and then, of course, you've always got the, the threat of Sky Scorching Light hanging <laughs> over everybody, so... Yeah, we do see Nest Ball for Ditto Prism Star. Uh, it, it's a card that's played in a lot of decks, usually Zorark decks these days, uh, because it's so flexible, it can evolve into so many different stage one Pokemon. I mean, we saw the deck that John Eng was playing earlier where it could evolve into Zorark GX, Lycanroc GX, Alolan Ninetales GX, Weavile, Alolan Muck. It could turn into any <laughs> of those. Uh, but in this deck, it is simply a fifth Inke because it can evolve into Malamar. <laughs> so you might wonder why he nest balled for Ditto when you could have nest balled for Inkay, which has 20 more uh, hit points than Ditto. But actually, Inkay can just be searched with other cards, like Mysterious mm -hmm. Treasure, but Ditto can't. So it's a better nest ball target than uh, an Inkay would be. Uh, and you hope to evolve this Ditto immediately. Whereas, you know, if things get very desperate, you could Hypnosis with an Inkay later on. <laughs> Inkay, it's a better Ditto. <laughs> uh, but we also see a Mimikyu on the side of Joey. Oh, that's um, huge, yeah. Which is really interesting as well. Um, Mimikyu has that copycat attack that for two psychic energy can uh, copy any attack on your opponent's side other than a GX move. Yeah, uh, and it is incredible yeah. against Ultra Necrozma GX. Uh, all you need is two psychic energy, and you can copycat Photon Geyser. Yeah. And uh, you don't need the metal energy on there, so you just discard both. And I mean, it's. I guess you, you do need a, a third one to get there, but... Just being able to like double Malamar, attach the psychic energy for the turn. You get to copycat the Photon Geyser for a knockout. And uh, if you use Distortion Door with Giratina at any point, it's only two energy to do it. It's excellent uh, it trades for the two prize alternate Grosma GX using just this 170 HP innocent looking Mimikyu. <laughs> uh, one important difference between the two lists is actually that uh, Brent does run damage modifiers in the form of Choice Band, mm -hmm. so he has two. And Joey doesn't run any. 
Um, so that's really important in terms of how many energy each player can attach and what the numbers they can hit each turn. Brent just has that slight edge in that he can, I guess it's like, what, half an energy? A choice band? It's sort of like half a, yeah. an extra half an energy that he can attach each turn and doesn't count as his, as his energy attachment. Yeah, it can make plays possible where they wouldn't be otherwise. So just like that Mimikyu, let's say, what, two energy and a choice band yeah. is enough to, to knock out an Ultra and Charisma GX and only putting a single prize attacker in the active Ooh. spot. So Ooh, That was not a good turn for Brent. Just attached energy to his Tapu Lele GX, used a Psychic Recharge onto Inke, and that's pretty much it. And it looks like Joey's going to take full advantage with Guzma going after the one Malamar that Brent has right now. And uh, if you're Brent here, this is looking pretty ugly, and we might see a similar situation to the first game where you look at it and go, yeah, let's play the next game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a 20-minute uh, you know, game three. That'll be fine. <laughs> um, a good sense of mind from Joey as well, not to just uh, knock out the Tapu Lele GX. A lot of people will re think, oh, I can just take two prizes off this Pokemon that's you know, in the active position, and I don't really have to do anything. But Joey recognizes that he can take those two prizes anytime later in the game, but that Malamar is the thing that's really allowing Brent to potentially do something next turn. So knocking that out is pretty intelligent play. play from Joey on that side, but that's kind of what I expect from Joey. Only yeah. the best plays. <laughs> and now we have the second uh, Malamar coming into play. So Joey has energy acceleration all ready to go. Gets the knockout with the Photon Geyser. He's got his Mimikyu powered up on the bench. So he is ready to go for just about anything Brent could throw at him. And Brent does not play the Dawnwings Necrozma GX, so he does not have that option of making the big comeback GX attack. That's really the main reason you play that card, but it has kind of fallen out of favor. Uh, it doesn't hit the same numbers as it used to. It's a very big liability against Zorark decks. Uh, if you ever start with Dawnwings Necrozma GX and you play against a Zorark deck, it feels terrible. <laughs> yeah, I just can't quite get there, even with the Beast Energy. Uh, you need a couple of different modifiers to be able to actually knock out as our Arc GX. Yeah, and it's weak um, to darkness, so they yeah, just it doesn't, <laughs> ride a speed. They don't knockout. even need a choice band. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so can Brent pull off an attack this turn? He does play Cynthia. He has two Malamar in play. Uh, he's got an energy so he can retreat Tapu Lele GX, but he's still going to need some combination of, like, uh, Ultra Necrozma GX plus Beast Energy or a choice band. And even if you do that, Mimikyu just comes out yeah. and uses Copycat. So there's not really a great option for you to take a knockout here without getting painfully returned knockout by the Mimikyu. But I feel like you have to, right? I mean, <laughs> you can't just sit there and do nothing for the whole game. Right. Uh, so you kind of have to commit in that way. And you got to hope that, oh, once I do deal with that Mimikyu afterwards, then hopefully uh, Joey has nothing going on. But <laughs> he's got a lot, of, a lot of things on board to work with. A couple of Malamar, Stellarish Jirachi. Yeah, I mean, you could go for Giratina and try to get a two-hit knockout, but that also doesn't seem great. Yeah, it's definitely a very awkward situation. And yeah. I feel like Joey just pulled ahead really quickly as well. Um, he was able to get things going, and Brent missed a couple of key turns of putting down Malamars and getting energy into play um, and finding Pokemon to attack with as well. Um, yeah. I'd say, interestingly, also, just because he has no uh, Jirachi, available to him at the moment, um, and that seems to be actually problematic for him. I think people are relying a lot on Jirachi to find cards in their deck. Um, and when they don't have that option, yeah, it's a bit difficult. So we do see the Distortion Door from Giratina. Going to put damage counters. Uh, it looked like he pointed to both Malamar. Uh, no, it looks like... Oh, yeah, both Malamar. Uh, so earlier in the day, it seemed like we were going to see this awesome Sky Scorching Light GX attack. Uh, set up by Brent where he could take all six prize cards. And then later we realized that is impossible because you can't use Sky Scorching Light GX until the combined total of prize cards between both players is six or fewer. Mm -hmm. And uh, if one player has not taken a prize card, that is impossible to reach. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> uh, sadly so. So six prize knockouts, uh, not particularly possible. But you can set up some big turns where you can wipe out multiple Malamar in the same turn. You can wipe out Jirachi and Mimikyu at the same time with Sky Scorching Light GX. But uh, you do have to take a knockout somewhere along the way. Otherwise, you never get a chance to use it. And part of that strategy is just reusing uh, Giratina's Distortion Door ability over and over again. And so this is actually why Brent has put this Giratina into the active spot. Yeah, it didn't do any damage, but he's hoping it's going to get knocked out, and then he can use Distortion Door 
put those two more damage counters down until those uh, Malamars are 60 away from being knocked out. So it might seem a bit odd to put the Giratina in if it's not going to do anything, but it's sort of doing something and being put into the discard pile and being able to use to be used later. Yeah, this is an awkward turn for Joey, though. He does not find a switch or anything like that to allow him to get his alternate Chrozma GX to the bench. Uh, you can only Psychic recharge to a benched Pokemon, so he just attached for the turn, and looks like he'll have to settle for the Photon Geyser for 100 damage, not getting a knockout. And every turn he's unable to find a knockout just means more time runs off the clock, makes it less likely that we have a winner in this match. So interestingly, that 100 damage put onto Giratina, though, means that it can't put 40 damage on itself with Shadow <laughs> Impact. It, it had to put it elsewhere, and there are no, <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah. to knock itself out. <laughs> Uh, but there's not really a great target to put it elsewhere at the moment. If you put it 40 on Malamar, well, that's just setting up for a Sky Scorching Light knockout. 40 on Lele, well, that's just setting it up to be giving away two prizes much yeah. more easily. Um, so, yeah, kind of awkward there. Yeah, if you're Brent, I'm actually not sure what the game plan is. Um, I mean, it seems so hard to find a path to come back here. You're not going to get a knockout on this Ultra Necrozma. Your opponent's going to be several prize cards ahead uh, I, guess, I guess at some point you can pull off the Sky Scorching Light, but it just feels like it's going to be too late. Yeah, I wonder if he wants to try to KO the Mimikyu first. I don't know. It's very, it's just awkward all around. Indeed. <laughs> uh, he can Shadow Impact this turn, hit for 130 damage, at least set up this Ultra Necrozma to be knocked out on a following turn or by... By Sky Scorching yeah. Light. Yeah. <laughs> that's his, that's his go-to play, I think. But like you stated, you need to take a prize card somewhere right. to be able to use that attack. Got to do something. <laughs> and then, again, where do you put the four damage counters? But it looks like he's probably going to go for it. Yeah, I think you just put it on top of Lele GX. Yeah, you expect it to be knocked out anyway. Probably, yeah. Uh, because yeah, putting it on Malamar seems like a disaster waiting to happen if your opponent is able to use... That GX attack later on in the game, at least this forces your opponent to have Guzma. So I see a committed uh, attachment to the Ultra Necrozma GX and then a Shuffle Draw Supporter. Looks like what it's going to be. Uh, will That Ultra Necrozma GX will get a knockout in the Giratina if it does attack with the Photon Geyser. Yeah, I can see maybe one chance for Brent to win. Um, if he can take down this Ultra Necrozma GX, uh, then some point, if he can get enough Giratina out, I mean, he can put two more damage counters on both his Malamar and then one damage counter each on Jirachi and Mimikyu. Then you can set up for the big five prize, Sky Scorching Light, or four prize, and cl close out the game that way. The problem is, I don't know if he has enough Giratina to actually pull that off. Yeah, I think the problem is also Joey playing Escape Pro oh, yeah, and that, not that actually help. knocking out Giratina, <laughs> uh, which means that we can't, uh, Brent can't be using Distortion Door if it's done in the discard pile. Uh, really limits his option. He's decided to promote the Malamar, deciding that that's, you know, I'm okay with this being knocked out, versus a Tapu Lele, which will give up two prizes. Yep, so we see Stellar Wish. Uh, Drachi finding that Lily, and he'll be able to retreat thanks to the escape board. And I guess we'll have to find out which Pokemon he wants to attack with here. He could copycat since Giratina did use Shadow Impact in the last turn, so he could do 130 damage with Mimikyu's copycat, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. You see the 70 HP Pokemon come in and knock out Malamar with a pretty big attack thanks to weakness. Yeah, it's a really interesting choice because it does put four damage counters on mm. some of his Pokemon, yeah. um, which actually sets up that Malamar or the Sky Scorching Light. Um, we've been harping on about it. I, I just want to <laughs> see it. I just want to see yeah. it now. I mean, come on. But... Brent also does play two Giratina, so there is also one still available that he can discard and reuse. He can put 10 damage on the Jirachi, and that sets it up for a Sky Scorching Light at, uh, knockout as well. So it seems kind of hopeless, but it also seems like there are actually still options available to Brent that, you know, slim, slim chances, but yeah, I they think are there. This turn, Brent actually needs to do something like Guzma out the Malamar with one damage counter on it just so he can take a prize card yes. and give him a chance to pull off the big Sky Scorching Light GX. Uh, you need to take a knockout somewhere, but the problem is you don't want to knock out Mimikyu because that's one of your easy targets for the Distortion Door. 
putting the damage counter on and then putting six more with Ultra Necrozma later. Exactly. It just, it, it's really tough because if your opponent knows what you're up to, they can do things like, oh, I'll play Escape Rope and force you to uh, bring out something else so I don't put your Giratina back in the discard pile or Guzma, knock out something else. Just seems so unlikely for Brent to win at this point. It is possible, but it's got to be like less than 10%, and it just is that worth playing for at this point? You're playing for a spot in day two, potentially. Did that come from the discard pile? Yeah, he okay. had just ultra balled that away, or Viridian Forest. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks, oh, okay, this works. This is it? Yeah, he can go after Tapu Lele GX. This is actually amazing. Yeah. So he'll be able to knock out the uh, Tabu Lele GX. He will put four damage counters on his own side of the board. So we also have to remember that Sky Scorching Light GX is available to Joey as well for his GX move as he hasn't uh, used his Dawn Wings to Krozma GX. And you see the Choice Band coming into play there, mm. uh, adding 30 damage to the Giratina's attack. That's an option Joey would not have. And now Brent is able to give himself a chance in the game. There's now... Now if Joey takes a prize, there are actually four prizes available to uh, Brent on yeah. Joey's side of the field. So... And what do you even do if you're Joey now? Yeah, you can't just not take a prize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you try to set up for the Sky Scorching Light uh, on your own side? Uh, taking out the Malamar does oh, mean that yeah. you can't get a Sky Scorching Light on Brent's side uh, because he obviously can't attach two energy in one turn if he doesn't have access to Psychic Recharge. So that's one avenue of play. Very true. Uh, but it sort of feels like only a matter of time until Brent can just get those two energy on. In fact, two turns. If the, if the Malamar's knocked out. Yeah, although, I mean, if you can Guzma this turn and Guzma the next turn, you'll knock out the Malamar, go into two prize cards, Guzma Tapu Lele GX, and uh, take the win that way. So I think Joey's identified that's got to be the way he dances around this Ultra Necrozma GX attack. So you said 10% chance that Brent wins. Have we changed it? Is it higher? Uh, yeah, it's a little higher now. Okay. <laughs> although with Jirachi and, uh, well, he's already used his Tapu Lele GX. Not sure if he has Rescue Stretcher. He does. Uh, seems like he'll have access to Guzma at some point. I don't think he's played very many of them yet. And uh, he's only playing three Guzma, though. Mm, interesting. So not guaranteed that he'll get it. Yeah, it's kind of sometimes people cut a, a Guzma from their list um, in favor of something like an escape rope because yeah. they think it has the same effect, but they can draw into it and still play it if they've played a supporter. Yeah, um, which, so I wonder which if that's he did what's use happened earlier. here. Yeah. Yeah. We see... I, Taking a Luli. I was quite excited that he was playing a Luli then, but. Yeah, taking. he's already got Guzma in hand. This is going to be a tight finish to the second game here. Now, we've been waiting to see the Sky Scorching Light GX all day. We might finally get a chance to see it. But we also might not. Yeah. The chances, the chances <laughs> are, so, are all the same. Yeah. Uh, and then another problem is if. Okay, there's the first Guzma. Mm -hmm. Uh, now Brent effectively cannot bench another Inke because then Sky Scorching Light yeah. would be a two-prize swing for Joey. So, I mean, next turn he's basically got to put down an Ultra Necrozma, attach an energy, and fingers crossed. Hey, yeah, <laughs> he's got to hope there's no other Guzma. But, I mean, Joey has access to, what, two Jirachis as well to be able to try to find that Guzma. Yeah. So there is the copycat using Giratina's Shadow Impact, getting the knockout on... That Malamar taking away the option for Brent to power up his Ultra Necrozma GX this turn. Uh, if he were able to do something like uh, if he played a random energy switch in his deck or something, he could potentially win this turn, but otherwise he's got to just set up for the two-turn win. I may or may not have just double-checked the deck list just to make <laughs> sure there, wasn't a, there was no energy switch there. Uh, but really clever play from Joey, seeing that this is... You know, the way that I lose is by not doing this. So, of course, I have to do this. I have to Guzma the Malamar. Um, and there comes a Cynthia from Brent. His deck is looking very small. Very few cards left there. Um, not sure if he has all the resources he needs to be able to pull this back. I guess we'll find out. If you're Brent here, I think, I mean, you're certainly searching for Ultra Necrozma GX. you got to play that down, attach an energy to it. Uh, if you don't find it here, you've basically lost the game. But he does find Ultra Necrozma GX. Uh, I think it's somewhat important to not knock out this Mimikyu here. Mm -hmm. uh, it would allow Joey to send out Jirachi and get multiple Stellar Wishes off and dig deeper for the, the game-winning Guzma. So I think if you're Brent here, you can simply 
retreat to one of your Giratina and pass the turn and hope you get that final turn to pull off that big GX attack. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it looks like he's going to attack there. Okay, he Takes out the Mimikyu to put himself down to three prizes. All right, now Joey's going to get two different Stellar Wish abilities to find the game-winning Guzma. He can go after the Tapu Lele GX on the bench or even the Ultra Necrozma at this point. Does he find the game-winning Guzma to tie up this series and force a game three? Oh, my heart is, like, pounding. I've got to see how this goes. I mean, these are two both players from Oceania, so I'm a lot invested in both of them doing well, but it looks like we've got a rescue stretcher. Oh, he Tapu looked through Lele. his deck. He found Guzma in there, so he can rescue stretcher for Tapu Lele GX. Guzma out one of those Pokemon GX and Photon Geyser for the win. Yeah, wow. And we're going to go to a game three. And not much time left, only 10 yeah. minutes. So that's a little bit awkward for both players. Um, he didn't attack with Sky Squatching Light, so, you know, <laughs> I, I can dream. There's always yeah. tomorrow, right? The darkest timeline. We, <laughs> we might have <laughs> we a tie and it. we didn't see Sky Squatching Light uh, GX. <laughs> yeah, as we discussed earlier, this is really a, a win. Um, win or out kind of situation for these yeah. players. I mean, there, there are prizes awarded to the players who make it to the top 64, and mm -hmm. you know, obviously 32 of those players don't progress to day two, but all players want another chance to, to keep playing and just play in those five rounds tomorrow, and then hopefully in the top eight, top four, and the final. Um, but a tie here will actually effectively rule out these players from being able to do that. They, they do have to win. Um, you know, one of them has to win in eight minutes and 30 seconds, which is <laughs> quite difficult, um, but it can be done. You know, if your oh, yeah. opponent doesn't, doesn't draw the best, um, the best cards, especially if you're disrupting them with something like Marshadow GX. Yeah. It's like, can we just both agree to play with Pokemon GX this game? So we, <laughs> so we can take a quick six prizes. <laughs> All right. Handshake and game number three underway of our final Swiss round here from the first day of the Oceania International Championships. Brent starting off with that Jirachi and is able to Stellar Wish into the Cynthia. Oh, which is very fortunate because he had no other supporters. Oh, yeah, uh, not draw bad. supporters, that is. <laughs> uh, discards Giratina, and it looks like Choice Band as well. So he's off to a pretty solid start. Yeah, getting rid of that Giratina into the uh, discard pile as well is really fortunate because it means he can use that Distortion Door. I mean, you know, sometimes the, the one damage counter on two Pokemon isn't so relevant, but it's always nice to be able to use it just in case. Um, and as we saw later, you know, when you have Sky Scorching Light as an option, yeah, it's always nice to be able to use. And this is where Brent might regret not playing that Marsh Shadow in his deck with Let Loose. This is the kind of situation where you would love to just <laughs> slam down Marsh Shadow and be like, look, all you have is Inke. And if you don't draw yeah, anything else... Yeah, you draw nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's um, one way to win a game in less than 10 minutes. I mean, that's my strategy in all matchups. <laughs> <laughs> just try to disrupt my opponent and uh, <laughs> recognize that they're probably better than I am. <laughs> so here we go, Cynthia, six cards. I mean, what else could you ask for from this start? Maybe an energy attachment to an Ultra Necrozma. I think yeah. uh, having three Inkays is pretty optimal. Uh, maybe finding an escape board. You know, your opponent doesn't play Field Blower, so it's not really a risk to play that down onto Jirachi. Um, it's like he does have Mysterious Treasure plus Psychic Energy in hand, so he could find Ultra Necrozma, attach an energy. Could also just discard the Psychic Energy. He's like oh. just going to pass, though. Going to hold on to his hand. Maybe recognizing that he might want to find a Malamar, or maybe he doesn't know that his opponent doesn't play uh, Marshadow. Yeah, although he did see Judge in the last game. But if your opponent's playing Judge on turn one, you know, <laughs> they've, they've got bigger issues going on, yeah, I think. Sure. <laughs> so Ultra Ball from Joey does get a Psychic Energy in the discard pile, along with that Dawnwing's Necrozma GX. And he'll probably find himself, looks like Jirachi, so he can start setting up. Both these players are probably going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. We're going to need to see some quick turns, some quick knockouts, if they want any hopes of finishing the match. And Joey is playing that escape rope. It's helping out quite a bit to get that Jirachi in the active spot. And a big turn one Lily for <laughs> six cards. Not seeing another even, Inkay. Hasn't even used Stellar Wish yet. Uh, that could get the Nest Ball or an Ultra Ball. But still, I'm only seeing one in K and there's a mysterious treasure. Excellent. That'll do it. Otherwise, uh, Brent could have just targeted down that in K and possibly run away, run away with the game. Yeah, definitely. He's going to discard Giratina with a uh, mysterious treasure. Usually an easy discard since you can always get it back. That old Viridian Forest, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So there we go, second in K. 
And this is really the optimal starts from both players. This is how the Malamar decks are typically run, whether it's the, the version with Necrozma GX or the version with, um, you know, sometimes with spread mm -hmm. kind of cards like Tapu Koko um, or with the Ultra Necrozma GX. You know, your turn one is always, let's just find as many Inke as we can so we can, you know, Psychic recharge as much as we can on turn two. So we do see Joey being a bit more aggressive using that Giratina Distortion Door immediately so he can put an energy on it and try to attack. I think he recognizes, I can't afford to miss an attack on my second turn. It's not something I'm used to seeing, a uh, metal energy on a Giratina. <laughs> but, you know, you have, to, you have to change your game plan a little bit sometimes and just you know, take the knockouts that you can, especially when you're in these positions when there's less than five minutes remaining in the match that is going to decide whether you make it to the second day of an international championships or not. Yeah, great uh, second turn here from Brent so far. Plays an Ultra Mall and a Mysterious Treasure. Is able to discard multiple Psychic Energy, get two Malamar out. And uh, if things go correctly, he should be able to pull off an attack this turn. Yeah, he does still need a few pieces, though, such as an attacker and also energy in the discard pile. I don't think there are too many. There might be one. I think it's, um, it's either one or two. Yeah. Well, there's a Nest Ball and there's a Beast Energy. So that's, yeah, that's certainly good. one way to get there. But is there a way to retreat the... Inke from the active position. Right, that's the question. Oh, there's a switch, sort of mocking Brent at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, skateboard would do it, switch would do it. Can he find any of those, though? It's like, just the nest ball for Ultra Necrozma. He does have the beast energy in hand, and there is the skateboard. Okay, nice. so going to get a turn to knockout with this Ultra Necrozma GX. It's exactly what he needed. Uh, also gets Giratina back. And that's one way to apply, apply pressure in this um, match where you just have to take six quick knockouts. And there's one. Can he take five more is the question. <laughs> I mean, it's not unrealistic, I don't think, in this, this sort of uh, Malamar deck set up to just continuously recycle attackers right, and yeah. just take prizes quite quickly. Um, you know, ordinarily, you can put one energy on per turn, but when you have Psychic Recharge... Oh, Mimikyu coming in for Joey. Uh, if he's able to it's get very big, yeah. If he's able to get double Malamar, uh, he'll still need a switch, which he does not play. Oh, he does play one switch. Um, he'll be able to power up Copycat for the knockout on on the Ultra Necrozma, copying its Photon Geyser attack. Yeah, with no Jirachi Stellar Wish ability though, and playing a Cynthia, it's looking like he's going to have to draw very optimally. <laughs> Uh, to, get well, that, to get that. If there were any time to do it, it would be right now. Yes. So six important cards for Joey. Does find a Malamar. If he can find a switch to go oh. with it. A lot of good things, but I don't think the mm. things that he needed that turn. Not quite there. Does find Viridian Forest. He could have gotten a Psychic Energy with that, but looks like he's going to fall just a little bit short. And now comes the question of how do you approach this turn? Is this, the, is this time for the desperation hypnosis? <laughs> I wouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, it might be what he has to do. Got to think if Brent goes ahead two prizes, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. There's yeah, the psychic energy. Then... Or is it going to go else? <laughs> or is he going to attach it? <laughs> Look, I know you're, you're rooting for hypnosis, but I'm... <laughs> Actually, you never know right now. All right. The moment of truth. Where does the psychic energy go? This is a bizarrely relevant uh, decision. Does it go on the Mimikyu? This shouldn't be as exciting as it is. There we go. Oh, okay. come on. Ends up on the Mimikyu. Well, not yet. He's still got his hand on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, takes it back. Because we have time for this in this matchup <laughs> yeah. with one minute and ten seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to analyze all the options. Oh, no. One more check. <laughs> Where will the psychic energy end up? Nobody knows. It's like a whodunit. Oh, okay. it's going to the ink gate. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's almost there. Oh, the suspense is killing me, honestly. <laughs> oh, we oh, did it. Left. All there right, it here we go. Hypnosis. hypnosis. All right, this is a big flip, and it is. Oh, oh that's no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Stays awake. So much for that. <laughs> uh, we see Brent discarding the nest ball to the Viridian Forest, finding a psychic energy, and 
This turn's probably going to be a bit shorter. <laughs> I do think so. No deliberating over energies. Yep, there we just go. Takes a prize very quickly. Attachment, psychic recharge, knockout. Please, please give me more turns so I can win this game. Yeah, like we said, the players don't, aren't really privy to what the clock situation is and how much right. time is left. But as you said, I think, who knows, yesterday, today, I don't know what time it is anymore. But you <laughs> did say that, uh, you know, players t typically have this internal body clock. They know yeah. how long the games have been going for. They know that it's very near the end of the round um, and that, you know, things need to happen. Yeah, speaking of that, the clock has hit all zeros, and that means we are out of time in this round. Um, we will have three additional turns to decide a winner, if possible. Uh, looks like Joey will be turn zero, and then his opponent will get turns one and three. And we're just going to see the copycat using Photon Geyser for 180 damage, which is a bit short, but can set up you know, things like Distortion Door, uh, and Sky Scorching Light. Uh, we only got 120 damage on there. It should be much more than that. <laughs> yeah. 160, 180? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, oh, he actually plays Acerola. Ah, so it didn't matter. Picks up his Ultra Necrozma GX. Wow. Most, uh, most Malamar decks are not playing Acerola. Yeah, people typically don't have time, sort of the space to fit that card for one, but also... Um, typically wouldn't decide to play it because they just think that they're just going to be trading uh, two prizes with their opponent, dealing lots of damage, right, expecting yeah. lots of mirror matches. Um, there's right. a knockout. There's the shadow impact for the knockout. Going down to three prize cards. Brent said the speed with which Brent was playing then makes me think that perhaps I'm not sure if time was uh, Maybe our timer is not cold. accurate. They might yeah. have had a time extension. Oh, it looks like Joey's realizing that no one can resolve the game. <laughs> Uh, he's going to double Psychic Recharge to the Malamar. And yeah, I believe time has been called at this point. You can see Joey say, okay, this doesn't matter, I pass. Yeah. And I do think that a, a tie here, though, means that both players are um, probably locked in for the top 64, so they still will walk away from this match with uh, championship points and hopefully some prizes, but of course there will be that disappointment of not making of course, uh, to, yeah. the day, to the second day, to day 32. Uh, sorry, day two, <laughs> uh, the top 32. Is that what it feels like, day yeah, 32? Yeah, no, it feels like day I, I, didn't, I can't even uh, complain. I don't have this jet lag, but... Uh, it's, um, Still a long day. Yeah, yeah. But credit to both players, though. They got to the point where they could have made it to the, to the 